some more unexpected greatness. We're here to chat from what we talked on our podcast about the NCAA women's because Caitlin is a basketball fanatic and she is a mad big fan of Paige Beckers and Caitlin Clark, even though Caitlin spells it the wrong way. But enjoy our little chat from our podcast where we talk about this. So, yeah. All right. So we're going to like fast forward a bit more now from that whole Centennial Colorado exploring thing because that was fun into and my you can't okay no you can't move on without mentioning um my professional google earth skills it's crazy they're amazing right did you want to talk about Paige Beckers and Caitlin Clark or should we just yeah like um I'm choose not to comment on those other matters so you want uh, see I wasn't necessarily going to start directly with the Yukon Iowa game because that was I was think that game, that game was day? okay start with the, that was I, definitely the game of the day I think let's start wait pause with... pause that wasn't I won't say that was the game of the day that was the most hyped up game because of Paige Beckers and Caitlin Clark yes it's just if anyone so, is wondering unfortunately I am not hundred percent of my women's basketball and they're the two players I do know the most. So I was gonna say you keep me. mentioning them, but I'm assuming that's just because those are the two names that are it's sticking in your head. Two names that Kristen Williams of Yukon had an amazing game. Not like I've just pulled up an article from the athletic and I'm reading that. But hey, I was gonna say Caitlin's job gonna say. here is to educate me and you about the women's basketball and well, even play okay, it. Like, pause, not, pause, I pause. I don't know a whole heck of a lot. Like, this is my first year watching it, like, religiously. Past years, I've watched a game here and there. I've always kind of kept up with UConn. I always check their scores and everything like that. But I've never actually watched it start to finish and everything like that. This year, I actually have, and I think it's because of all the hype they've brought up about the freshmen this year in the women's um, side of things, which I've... Somehow I've just kind of taken the liking to, and I've started following that, which fair enough. Um, I, mean, I guess I can. S- so I guess what you're saying is we're all learning together, whether Pretty much. you support men's and you like, if you're a gambling addict, I mean, it's just more stuff to gamble on if that's what you're into. But they don't have DFS. If they had DFS for women's basketball, I guarantee you I'd be buying it because I play everything. <laughs> I played the MMA today, and that's actually going well. I like basketball. So I'm keen to stop that when I can play more fantasy baseball. But, yeah, so let's learn together. Let's all just sit down, grab some water, grab a beer, grab coffee, coffee, whatever you want, a scotch, some whiskey, an apple Get juice. Get those rolls in milk. as much as you want. Roll up the rim ends on roll up a, April if roll 4th. Up, if you want to roll up a cigarette and have a cigarette while listening to us, we're okay with that. Hugs, not drugs. Is this cigarettes, drugs? I don't know. But yeah, so let's learn about the NCAA women's tournament and not that the NCAA is stupid and doesn't know how to give them an adequate training facility because... No, the... we're, we've, we went over that last time. We're we not going to dip into week. that. We're not going to bring just... that up again because they've corrected their mistake to a certain extent. We're going to move on. It's the NCAA. Give them like another week and they'll trip over their feet. Did you hear the whole, I was listening to Scotch and sports and they were saying how like they didn't have like any photographers or something for the women's stuff as well. And meanwhile, you've got like 20 on the men's. It's the NCAA. They literally just keep tripping over their own feet. So. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, it's not okay. unexpected, so. Anyway, should we get into talking a bit? We just rambled on. So should we get into talking about the tournament? That was a fun noise. ESPN just gave me an update. Francis Nungua stops stiping Minocic in the second round to become heavyweight champion. 10th knockout in UFC. Fun. Okay. Um, you, okay, so you brought up uh, Paige Beckers and Caitlin Clark. I feel like by default, that means we should start with that game. Although, mm-hmm. actually, we can start with that game. No, let's run That was the first the, game of the... Let, let, let's round up from the top, top, the bottom to top. Bottom to top. So, personally for me, the bottom game would have been... Yeah, 
probably the Arizona Texas game mainly because that was the one I just didn't watch as much. It's the last one of the day. I was preoccupied with this and just like some other things. So I did watch. The I always thing. find when you're watching so much sport throughout the day, for last games always a bit of a. I found an NFL season, especially because I get up at four a.m. in the morning, the prime time game. You're just not as invested. Well, and see, was the, the game part, competitive or was it just, just? That's what I was just about to say. It was for the most part. It wasn't like it was a good game to a certain extent, but it wasn't a close game in the end. So personally, I just didn't find it quite as exciting. But honestly, the games today, I was happy that the last one wasn't. I mean, like a nail biter like out that because the rest to, of them were. I'll give a shout out to. For fuck's sake. Are, are, are we on? Oh, God damn it. Do you know how to say Harry it? McDonald? Yeah. Uh, 31 points. 31. Oof. In 37 minutes, five yes. rebounds, one assist. Someone was on fire today. And Well, and when your team you, only scores 74 points, it's that's I mean, a, it's an impressive number to begin with. But The next on top highest of, person was Sam Thomas nine. with nine points. Mm-hmm. So well done to, I'm just going to say McDonald because I'm not going to. Sorry, McDonald. I keep reading oh it as a a Ron, so forgive me. a a Ron. a a Ron. A-A-Ron. Um, I'm not going to touch on the Aggies. You guys need to get back into the gym and working on the offseason, being blown out 74, but it is Texas A&M, so. I mean, that was a two-and-three and three matchup. It's not. Su- games, but, you know. That was a two-and-three matchup, so honestly, I was expecting it to be a closer game, but fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, I so- see that a lot. I mean. Kinetic, oh, UConn blowing out Iowa, but, you know. Okay, wait. You were very – should we go to NC State at Indiana now, or did you have anything more to say about yes, that? Yes, that's the one I was going to go to next. And you I were told pretty you, invested into this game, weren't you? I was invested into this game, and weirdly enough, I missed the first quarter because I was doing – I think I was, I was doing something at the time, but I missed the first quarter. But when I came into this game, for some reason – Wait, you I, missed okay, the first quarter? T- wait, do, hang on. Not sound like a rookie, but isn't it? Wait, do they do quarters or how? they do quarters? Don't they? they do quarters. They do Stop. quarters. Why do they jumble this up? Just do it. Get I know. Simple for me, please. They're doing it on purpose to mess with you. It's okay. I'm a small okay. brain person. Okay. I know. I know. It's just not fair. It's, it's not, not fair. fair. It's not fair. I'm praying for you. Thank you. Um, back to this game. Yeah, I. For some reason, I got really hyped up over this game. And honestly, partway through it, I realized I was like, so backstory, I started going for Indiana in this game and I couldn't figure out why I was like, why did I take a liking to Indiana? Mind you, they were playing really, really good, but I was confused. I was like, why did I take a liking to them? Then I realized I was wearing red and they were wearing red. So I think that just created that bond. And so I just had to support them, but I didn't pay attention to that. Like I just started supporting them, but that was the reason why. And I just didn't know it. If this is your first time joining us here at The Unexpected, Caitlin has a very big fascination with the colours and the, that's a big deciding factor into who she will support. It is. It really is. But, um, yeah, okay. So I was watching this game and I thought Indiana did a really good job. I don't know if, I, I don't know if that's just me being a rookie and not knowing how they normally play or anything. But I thought they did a really good job. So just going through the stats here because I'm just box score watching because I didn't watch the games. I was too busy getting in my hopeless NBA DFS lineups, um, which I ended up cancelling half of them out because it was a shit show. And I should stop swearing because we're going to put this on YouTube. Sorry, YouTube. Don't hate me. Ali Patberg, 38 minutes, 17 points, five. Oh, Grace Berger with the double double, the 12 12 double double double. Plus five assists. Yeah, hey, I got a double double. We love double doubles here. Double doubles. Also, oh, fuck. Fuck. Oh, shit. Oh. What? I'm trying not to swear because we're putting this bit up on YouTube and I literally went mm-hmm. F. F. Shit. So, you have to edit what that. What were you going to say? Aleska Galubi with. 38 minutes, another double-double. The double-double, Indiana loving the double. That's why you're more – that's why you were destined to be an Indiana fan. The double-doubles, two double-doubles. 
NC right. State had one double double. See, the key to winning, the key to Caitlin's heart is colors and double doubles. Actually, I don't like double doubles from Tim Hortons that much. Just you asked for a double double, so I got you double double. Just roll I'm rolling it. with it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm rolling with it. Okay. Looks like this was a good game. I'm keen to tune in tomorrow. I will be waiting from up what I bright and early to tune in. From what I watched in this game, uh, it was relatively tied around halftime. The third quarter, India came out strong. They came out so strong at the start of that well, third quarter. The breakdown here has Indiana twenty-four to for the Wolfpack fifteen in the third quarter. So yeah, you're right. And then it looks like the Wolfpack made a slight little comeback into the fourth one, but just couldn't prevail. That was a good game. I don't really have a whole lot to say about it other than I was hella stressed. I was so stressed. My blood pressure was on the rise. And yeah. So I guess the biggest... Oh my gosh, no. Hold on. I did have something else to mention with this. Mackenzie Holmes, one of their best players in the fourth quarter fouled out and I think there were still like four or five minutes left and that was a scary time. Oh yeah, she played 33 minutes and the rest of the starters look like hang on do they is it like a trend in women's basketball where they basically run five six six women rotations because like okay I so the minute breakdown so. here goes 38 minutes 33 minutes 39 minutes 38 minutes 37 minutes six five two two i don't think that's how they do it but uh, i could be wrong it's just very anyway fair enough okay Moving on to the next game of the day, which I know caused a lot of people a lot of stress because it was happy. Oh, Twitter was insane. Michigan and Baylor. Backtrack for a sec. We'll move this around in the editing. Uh, the whole Indiana uh, NC State, that was a four and one matchup. NC State was that number one seed, and Indiana beat them out. So, there's some food for thought. Hmm, interesting. So, we're moving on to, to Baylor and Michigan now? Mm-hmm. This one went into overtime, and it was so stressful. I, my heart was racing. My heart was really racing. Not uh, – this one I thought Michigan fought really hard for. Hmm. I I thought it was a really good fight, honestly. Fun fact, I didn't know this at all. Um, one of the Baylor players, Dee Dee Richards, apparently, I don't know if it was earlier this year. I don't know if you heard about this. I didn't hear about this. Basically, at the start of the season, her legs were paralyzed. My what? Yeah. A walking miracle. How... I didn't wait. So her legs were paralyzed and it was, they showed a clip of it and basically her and one of their other players in, I don't know if it was like a scrimmage or what it was just like in a practice, but they collided. They Mm. both went down, but she was unconscious for like almost two minutes and her legs were paralyzed. She was paralyzed months ago, a few months ago from the, I don't know when it was exactly, but from the time of injury to the time of her playing, like, on the court and stuff again was 38 days. And, like, it's not even like she's playing, like, one minute in the game or something. No. She's pretty much their star player. Not Eight eight boards, nine assists, four points. Oh, that's some old school. Don't care. But, I mean, you got Nalisa Nalisa Smith with 24 points. That's a lot of points. Mm -hmm. You ha- also have. You're going to have some troubles with the name here, aren't you? No, I'm just, I got caught up by the, I read it differently in my head when I first saw it. Moon, your sin. Moon Arson. That's, Moon that's the other girl that uh, Dee Dee collided with. Can we just, that's a sick name. Wee, oh, wee. Even the sirens, like it's so, oh. Someone's moody. Someone's moody. Someone oh, man, needs to get okay. out of the. Someone needs to get out of the way. Someone needs to get the H E double hockey stick out of the way. 
But can we just, what a sick name. Moon? Moon, you sin. Urson. You, you sin sicker, but okay. 20 Fair points enough. though. Whew. But Some wait, you mentioned Melissa here. Smith, right? You mentioned mm-hmm. Melissa Smith. Did you, yeah. wait, are you looking at stats? Yeah. Did you see she had a perfect 11 for 11? I'm not that, I have, I'm not, I'm just looking at that crappy little Google thing, so forgive me. I'm she, not. She had 11 for 11. Damn. Yeah. That oh. was a good game, honestly. Oh, it God, was. Bear with me. I'm going on to ESPN. This. Oh, boy. Why, why am I doing this to myself? I don't know. Why are you? God, watch my computer literally fry itself up. Yeah. Oh, she missed one free throw, though. Well, it was 11 for 11 from the paint and elsewhere. 11 from 11 from the field. But one for Same come on. Thing. I mean, come on, Noel. She's, she's if you're that in. good at your shots, you should be able to get your free throws. Free throws. Wait, free which brings throws, me kids. back. Which brings me back to the Indiana game. The it was pretty much tied at the end. One of the girls on Indiana who has a fifty percent at the free throw line made both her free throws, and that pretty much put them ahead to win the game. Practice your free throws, kids. Free throws win. Practice games. your Remember free throws. That. Don't be a happy shot. Exactly, exactly. Moving on yeah, to... You were tweeting a lot about this game and stuff, but I was fast asleep for most of it, unfortunately. So Yeah, better. you were fast or asleep for most of it. you can help us be a super big podcast and I can move to the States so I can put up with all Canada and put up with I was going to say, better. you're moving to the States? No, probably Canada. I don't know. Probably Canada. But Canada, I think there's just a few better people in there. Who knows? Facts. I'll have to find out. Yeah, totally. Moving on to Mm -hmm. possibly my two favorite players, because not like (laughs) one of my three favorite players, okay? Paige Beckers, Caitlin Clark, Kristen Williams. Yeah. Like, how? No, there's another one you have to be a fan of Aaliyah Edwards. She's the Canadian on UConn. And she played so good today. So good. Yes, she is the other freshman in the starting there. Well, I don't know if she actually started, but I'm pretty sure she did. If she didn't start, she was right near the... She she basically did amazing. I've heard a lot about this. So the whole UConn, Iowa, about the mm-hmm. star players. So when you look at it, UConn, just doing UConn things. I mean, anyone mm-hmm. that does that knows anything a little bit about basketball, like the college basketball, no, the Yukon is just a wrecking ball machine. Mm-hmm. 92 to 72. Yes. Whew. Caitlin Clark just couldn't carry. She couldn't she couldn't carry them, but she gave a good effort by this from what it looks like. But hey. She did. She did. One thing I wanted to bring up. So Caitlin Clark, Paige Beckers, they're like the freshmen of this class. And I was just thinking, so both of them, neither one of them performed very good in that first quarter, not even honestly in the first half compared to the whole game as as a whole. And so I don't know about you or anyone else, but all I've seen in the past three or four, two or three days is everything about the Paige Beckers versus Caitlin Clark, UConn, Iowa match. Hmm. That is all I've seen. I've seen Caitlin Clark goes head to head against Paige Beckers. Caitlin Clark this, Paige Becker's this. Wouldn't you think, I know hype is good and it gets people into the game and everything like that, but they are freshmen. This is their first NCAA and I know hype is good, hype is good, hype is good. But I think it got to them both. I mean, uh, hype is, I know like you can say like, you're going to be playing in the WNBA I'm assuming in a few years. Like they're going to be Pressure, there definitely. Pressure's going to be always a thing you have to deal with in sports, right? And oh, for sure. Yes, you're a freshman, but the college game is seen so much more at like a marketable level. And you know, ESPN are going to just jam it down. Um, oh yeah. People's throat. 
Well, they're so, going to do everything they can to advertise it because it's been so I hyped think, up because they're two of the most talked players in the NCAA women's edition. I, I don't necessarily know if it's on the athletes in this situation to be more prepared because you're a freshman. You don't know. You've come from playing high school. All of a sudden you're playing in this tournament, big tournament. There's lights, there's cameras. ESPN are asking you to do interviews and stuff and all this. It's up to like the coaches and getting like good psychological team base and just preparing them, telling them this is how you do it. And it's, I guess, where your seniors and everything come in and say, look, the light's going to be there. You're good. Every mistake is going to be analysed. So it's a growing pain. I know I get, like, the hype can get to them, but it's going to make them greater, in my opinion. Like, yeah. As a freshman, if you're doing this and still putting good numbers up on such a huge stage, imagine what they're going to be like in three, four, five years going into the well, WNBA. I mean, it's like, and I guess Sabrina, like- Sabrina Lulescu, I don't know how to pronounce it. She's killing it. And she was so hyped up and, like, she embraced that hype and now she's killing it. So, well, I was going to say, like, that I guess that's the type of hype they've trained all these hard hours for. Not I mean, like the top I of guess, the top, but this is one of the biggest steps along the way. It's, it's more just a growing thing, I think. Like, you can never like fully train for the hype, you can prepare for it the best to your abilities. But the only, the only way you get better at it is by experiencing it. And going through it. And yes, if you're Caitlin Clark, true. this sucks. But you're going to come back next year. You're going to train. You're going to know what it's like. You're going to be stronger. You're going to be better. Like physically, you might improve. But if you improve mentally, your game is going to improve as well. Well, and I think at the end of the day, like this is not the only time they're going to be seen. This is literally the beginning of the beginning for them. Yeah. You'll be back next year. So we, I will make it my business to make sure I will be following Iowa next year because I want to see how you go. Paige Beckers, you're exactly. a two Anyway. <laughs> too good. <laughs> anyway, let's just have a quick little rundown. This is a YouTube exclusive. So this is just for our YouTube audience out there. We've got, I'm making this up on the fly. Sorry, Caitlin. So yeah, that's okay. Tomorrow, it's okay. This could, we could scrap this if we don't do it. So tomorrow we've got South Carolina at number five, number one, South Carolina at number five, Georgia Tech, number one, Stanford at number five, sorry, not at, I don't know I'm saying like that, but versus Missouri State. We've got one of my schools I like, so I'll probably tune in for this game maybe. I might have a class on that. If time. you're away. Number six, Oregon. First number two, Louisville. And number six, Texas. The women are doing better than the men, but it doesn't take much because the men are funny and just laughable. At number two, Maryland. So which games are, rank those four games out of, what's your priority? Like which games are you most interested in? You know, I honestly probably think that I mm, probably will end up watching the Stanford Stanford game for sure. Stanford game number one? That, I'd say that is probably number one. And maybe, uh, maybe the Maryland game. You know, I'll probably watch them all. <laughs> probably. That's kind of, kind of the plan. I think we're going to, I think we're going to hit them all. And also, just because we are all floating, tomorrow in the men's, we've got number one, Gonzaga, 13-point favourites against Crichton. Uh, if you know anything, Gonzaga should do this. Jalen Suggs looks like a beast. And I could, I don't know, but I've got Gonzaga winning it all. Do you have anything to say about this? Uh, not a whole lot, but I do know some people that also have. Gonzaga winning at all, so we'll see We've how that got goes. Number one, number one, Michigan versus number four, Florida State. Michigan are two and a half point favorites for this game, and I, without doing much, because I'm not that invested in, but just from what I've been doing reading and stuff, I'm gonna go Florida State. I just reckon they could get the upset here. I don't know. I don't. Let's be saying about Michigan. Everything I've read about them, is just there's something about them. People just don't. But yeah. I had LSU be upsetting Michigan last week, so maybe I'm just annoyed. If I got LSU up, I would have been looking very good. We got a team I like, number two, Alabama, six and a half point favorites against UCLA, number 11. Another good game. Definitely think Alabama should be too strong. Alabama just looked so good. I mean, they played Maryland last week, so that should be a very good one. And then the game, this one will be interesting. If you want to tune into a men's one, this one will be good. Number six, USC versus number seven, Oregon. 
Isaiah Mobley, he looks like a beast. Probably going to be another top pick in the draft. Going to be very good. The Ducks, I've read they're out for revenge from what happened earlier in the season. A great Pac-12 matchup. The Pac-12 has looked on fire in the men's tournament.